The movie begins with a man named Stu, a slick, fast-talking publicist in New York City. As he navigates the bustling streets of Manhattan, confidently handling his business on the go. Stu is manipulative and self-absorbed. He treats people around him, including his assistant Adam, with little respect. As he's walking down the busy streets of Manhattan, confidently maneuvering through the crowd, he's approached by a police officer who recognizes him and initiates a conversation. The interaction shows his connections and influence, even with local law enforcement. Stu gives the officer VIP tickets for a Britney Spears concert in exchange for some information. The cop informs him about a crime that happened recently saying it'll get him the fame he craves for desperately. After the brief meeting with the cop, he goes in a specific phone booth and there he takes off his wedding ring. A delivery guy approaches him and tries giving him the pizza he ordered. Stu tells him he didn't order one but the man insists. He gets annoyed and tells him to walk away. He then makes a secret call to his mistress named Pamela McFadden, without his wife Kelly finding out. Pamela is a young actress who he's trying to impress. He uses the phone booth to maintain secrecy and manipulate the situation to his advantage. During the call, Stu lies to Pamela about his situation, pretending to be more important and powerful than he actually is. Showcasing his deceitful nature and his habit of manipulating others. As soon as Stu finishes his call with Pamela and about to leave the phone booth, the phone rings. Intrigued and somewhat irritated, he answers it, only to be met with an unsettling voice on the other end. The voice on the line informs Stu that he's being watched and that there is a sniper rifle aimed at him. The caller threatens to unalive him if he hangs up or tries to leave the booth. At first, Stu thinks it's a joke and dismisses the threat as a prank. He tries to brush it off, but the caller quickly proves his seriousness by demonstrating his ability to see everything Stu is doing. The caller describes details of Stu's surroundings and actions, convincing him of the reality and immediacy of the threat. He drops the calls and looks around for any suspicious movements from people. A few minutes later, the phone rings and Stu is forced to go back to the booth to answer it. Stu asks the caller what he wants. The caller tells him to call his mistress and tell her that he's a married man but he refuses and the caller calls her. Pamela picks up and tells her he is Stu's friend. He informs her that he's married and that's why he calls her from a phone booth all the time. Pamela is confused to hear this and the caller hangs the phone. An adult worker named Felicia is in need of the phone and is frustrated that Stu is occupying it. Stu disrespectfully dismisses her, but she's persistent and clearly annoyed that Stu is taking too long. Stu already stressed and anxious from his conversation with the caller, tries to ignore her and tells her to go away. Felicia continues to insist that she needs to use the phone. Growing increasingly impatient, she bangs on the phone booth and raises her voice. Eventually, Felicia realizes Stu is not going to let her use the phone anytime soon and leaves in frustration. The caller demands him to call his wife and tell him about his affair with Pamela. He calls her and warns her not to pick up a phone number she doesn't know. He drops the call and demands the women to leave. The caller get annoyed at him for not telling his wife the truth and threatens him he'll unalive him. But Stu doesn't believe in his threats and cautiously looks around. To show him his seriousness the caller fires a silent shot that hits a toy robot next to the booth, convincing Stu of the imminent danger. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Stu starts to panic. As he's trapped in the booth with no immediate way out, and the fear of the unseen sniper adds to his anxiety. Stu tries to reason with the caller, asking why he's being targeted and what he wants. The caller responds by criticizing Stu's dishonest and manipulative lifestyle, telling him that this is a form of punishment for his selfish ways. Meanwhile, Felicia and the other adult workers inform their pimp Leon, about Stu's prolonged stay in the phone booth, he decides to confront Stu. He decides to take matters into his own hands and confront Stu to resolve the issue. Leon walks up to the phone booth where Stu is still engaged in a tense conversation with the caller. He's visibly angry and aggressive, Leon bangs on the glass of the phone booth and demands that Stu get out immediately so that he can use the phone. He accuses Stu of hogging the phone and being inconsiderate of others who need to use it. He tells Stu to get off the phone or face the consequences, using intimidation to try to force him out of the booth. Stu, already under immense pressure from the caller's threats, tries to handle the situation without escalating it further. He tells Leon to wait and that he will be done soon, but Leon is not willing to wait, as Leon continues to threaten and harass Stu, the situation escalates. Leon tries to forcibly remove Stu from the booth, becoming more aggressive and physical. To demonstrate his control and the seriousness of his threats, the caller intervenes. He fires a silent shot from his sniper rifle, 
hitting Leon and unaliving him instantly. Stu is left in shock and horrified as Leon's lifeless body falls to the ground. The sudden and violent death of Leon serves as a stark reminder to Stu and the surrounding onlookers of the deadly seriousness of the situation. The onlookers, including Felicia and the other adult workers, are horrified and scared by the sudden violence, they assume Stu did it and call the police. A few minutes later, the police arrive and Detective Ed Ramy takes charge of the situation. Not fully understanding what's going on, initially believing that Stu might be a dangerous individual holding someone hostage or posing a threat to himself or others. He approaches the phone booth and tries to communicate with Stu, who is still on the phone with the caller. Stu is highly anxious and scared, knowing that the caller is watching and listening to everything. He tries to follow the caller's instructions while also attempting to convey his distress to the police. They follow standard protocol for a potential hostage situation, trying to keep the situation from escalating further while attempting to communicate with Stu and ensure everyone's safety. The caller instructs Stu on what to say and do, warning him not to reveal too much to the police or attempt to leave the booth. He threatens to unalive both Stu and any officers who intervene if Stu does not comply. Stu, terrified for his life and those around him, tries to comply with the caller's demands while also attempting to signal his distress to the police without provoking the caller. A couple of minutes later, the crowd gets bigger and more anxious and curious. They are shocked by the unfolding drama and the police presence. The tension among onlookers adds to the pressure on Stu. The situation becomes more dramatic, media representatives and news cameras start arriving at the scene, adding to the public spectacle and pressure on the authorities. Rami instructs his team to secure the area around the phone booth. This involves keeping onlookers and the media at a safe distance to prevent the situation from becoming even more chaotic. Rami orders sniper units to be prepared and on standby. Since the caller is a sniper, having their own sharpshooters in position is vital for counteracting any potential threats and providing a tactical advantage. He emphasizes the importance of maintaining contact with Stu through the phone booth's glass. Keeping Stu talking is key to gathering information and managing his stress levels. Kelly arrives at the scene visibly worried and anxious. She's been informed of the situation involving her husband Stu. She becomes stressed and tries to get more of Stu's situation and the nature of the crisis. Detective Rami tries to manage the situation, provides Kelly with limited information. He reassures her that they are doing everything they can to resolve the situation but must also maintain the security of the operation. After seeing his wife, Stu becomes deeply affected by her arrival. He feels immense guilt and concern for her well-being, knowing that his actions and the ongoing situation are causing her distress. The caller instructs Stu to lie to Kelly, giving her false reassurance and expressions of love, the caller threatens Stu with further violence if he does not follow these instructions. The fear of harming Kelly or himself compels Stu to comply with the caller's demands. He decides to get down and call his wife. He records the conversations between him and the caller, letting everyone know that he's in terrible danger. The police decide to quickly trace the call and get information that the call originates in specific hotel room. Rami notifies Stu that they have the caller's location. He boldly tells the caller that the police are on his way. The caller panics and says he'll shoot Kelly. Stu takes out the gun that the caller told him to hold and gets out of the booth screaming take me. The police quickly shoot him to de-escalate the situation. Meanwhile the police quickly get to the room but they find it empty but they discover surveillance equipment and other evidence that reveals the caller's methods of monitoring and manipulating Stu. They get Stu up and tell him they used a rubber bullet on him. Make sure to like and subscribe for more notifications. Until next time, see you soon.